make you look at my <laughs> computer, computer uh, my laptop keyboard there. But yeah, if consistency is an area of struggle for you, uh, just tap the screen just a little bit. If consistency, staying consistent around your goals is an area of contention for you or an area that you struggle with, then tap the screen to let me know you are in the right place. Tap the screen and let me know you are in the right place if consistency is an area of struggle for you. So everybody's in the right place. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight is getting more consistent around your goals, getting around, getting more consistent in the areas of your faith, uh, getting more consistent in your business if you're an entrepreneur or just whatever your goals are. We want to talk about how to get more consistent. Now, if this is your first time on one of my Periscopes, I am Rachel L. Proctor, and I am an entrepreneur um, amongst many other things. I'm also an elected official, but for all intents and purposes for this course, I am a business owner, and I actually have, uh, as of last month, I actually have three companies that I run. Uh, one is a family-owned business. Uh, one is a family-owned business, a child care center. Then the other one is Rachel L. Proctor International, which is my speaking, coaching, writing uh, enterprise that I do all of that under. And last month, I just opened up my property management company. Um, of course, property management, we all know what that is. So I have three that I'm working on, and by the end of this year, possibly four. Um, and so I definitely know what it means to struggle with staying consistent, but I also know some things that I have been able to do in order to be more consistent and to be able to run those things and maintain my sanity <laughs> at the same time so again uh, I love 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 entrepreneurship but I know that everybody that's on the Periscope tonight is not a business owner uh, and you possibly don't have a desire to become a business owner but you just possibly need to get more consistent in life in general and so my philosophy is that you already have everything inside of you to be called to do what you're called to do. Uh, and that means you have a level of discipline, a level of tenacity, you have a level of consistency already in you. But it's about getting in there and digging your heels in to really tap into the motivations or the reasons or the things that are going to bring out of you what is already in you. I think a lot of times we get off track from what we're really called to do, which is another reason a lot of times we don't stay consistent, is because we get off track looking at what other people are doing, looking on at what's going on around us, or even looking at just the news or just all these other things that get our attention and take our focus off of what we are supposed to be doing. Uh, but it is up to you to nurture the seed that God has put inside of you. And so, um, again, I was really drawn to this topic of consistency because it is one that was a pivotal turning point for me in my business, my businesses, my life, my career, even my relationships. And when you look at the most successful people, it really isn't because they have any magical powers or they have more time than anybody else because that's the thing with time. Time is the only level playing field that everybody has. So it's about making the best use of your time, making, uh, learning how to prioritize and not just traditional prioritizing where you move number six up to the number one spot, but... <clears throat> looking at your life and your priorities and the things that you're doing with your time each and every day to make sure does number six even need to be on the list. A lot of times we are spending the time that we could or using the energy, uh, which is an expendable resource. We don't get more energy. Once you've used your time, once you've used energy, that's it. So you've got to make sure that you're using your time and your energy on the most important things that are going to move your life forward, that are going to move your purpose forward. And that's when you see successful people become successful because they found that out. They become or put themselves in a position or taken things out of their life uh, that don't push them forward that don't attribute to their success, that don't help them move into the things that they are called to do. Again, we've got to stay, oh, no problem, Keosha, glad you could make it. Um, 
you know, we've got to stay consistent, keep our focus on what we are supposed to be doing. What is my mission? Again, we're still talking about consistency. We really are talking about consistency because a lot of the times we don't stay consistent is because we're all over the place. If that is you, if you feel like sometimes you are all over the place, then I'm on the right broadcast. I'm on the right topic. You feel like you're all over the place and you really can't find a focus because everything gets your attention. A lot of times that was one of my biggest struggles in the past is and still still sometimes every now and then now is to prioritize or make sure that I'm not all over the place with my goals and my ambitions and even with my heart. Uh, a lot of times the service that we do, we we see a lot of good causes. There are a lot of things that we could give to or help out with or give our time to, but we have to learn that we have to learn how to say no to things that do not fall in line with your divine purpose. Now, finding your purpose, that I, that's really a whole different class, so I won't dwell too much on that. But once you find your purpose, you plan your life around that purpose. Remember, I always tell you guys, your purpose is not what you do. So don't get confused. It's not your job. It's not your career. It's not the nonprofit that you're running. That is not your purpose. That is a passion or that is what you're doing within that season of purpose. But that is not your purpose. And now this is why that is not your purpose. Because life is lived in seasons. And there are things that we can do now while we're in a certain season or while we're in our current season that we won't be able to do in later seasons. And when we're not able to do those same things, that doesn't mean we've lost our purpose. See, that's what the enemy tells you. It, it tells you just because you can't do that thing you used to do so well before that you don't have a purpose. So you don't want to attach your purpose to what you're doing because God may shift you out of that season and have you doing something else. And realistically, the things that you did when you were 20, you're not going to be able to do that when you're 65. That's just that's just real truth that's just the truth so you are the things you do while you're single you're not going to be able to do those same things when you're in a married season so you cannot attach your purpose to what you're doing um, a lot of times if you're trying to stick with one thing or try to make something that was successful that you were successful in in one season work in another season that's when things become hard that's when it becomes hard to be consistent with doing something because your grace for that thing is up and you're trying to make something work that worked in another season or maybe you experienced God in that season and you're trying to bring it up to this season but this is the thing about trying to go back to something if you constantly find yourself trying to go back to something that worked in one season or go back to something that you were doing in the past that tells me that you're not moving forward that tells me that you're not growing and to not grow is unnatural that to not grow is an unnatural process. If you find yourself reverting back, that is an unnatural process. Our bodies naturally grow. We grow from infants to toddlers to adolescents to young adults to adults to senior citizens. We are always growing whether you realize it or not. And to have a mindset that wants to constantly go back to something tells me that you are not growing and that you are stunted in your growth. Um, and so I want you guys to to get that, to grasp that, because when I really tap when when I really tapped into what that really meant for my life, as to far as make sure you are in the right season, you are operating in the right season. That's how you become consistent. That's how you gain the momentum. And this is the thing that I want to do. God just dropped this in my spirit. It's like when you are riding a bicycle. Because a lot of times we're looking for the consistency. It's like when you're riding a bicycle. In order to make that bicycle stand up straight and, and, and go forward, you have to keep moving. You have to keep moving. And so in order to find that balance we need and that consistency we need to consistently be achieving and moving forward, we have to make sure we are still moving. And some of us are stuck in a place trying to go backwards because we don't understand the season that we are in. And so I want you to uh, really realize that consistency, it is so much easier to get consistent when you are in the right season, when you are in position, because you don't want to be out of position. 
You don't want to be out of position. A lot of times we miss opportunities. And there are such things as missed opportunities. Uh, when we are out of season or when we are resistant to change. When God is trying to shift us since somewhere else. Now, yes, God is going to present those opportunities and he does all of that for us but there he does give us free will he's not going to force you into that season so you've got to move when God says move even when that seems scary to you even when there are unknowns that you don't understand what God is doing it's not up to us to understand it God's ability to be God is not predicated on your ability to understand what he's doing at the time it's not your job to change God's timing. It's not your job to change it. You just need to understand that God is working and when he's moving. So, again, talking about consistency, how do you get more consistent? Well, I'm going to say this for real, y'all. Consistency is not rocket science. Consistency is not rocket science. Consistency is very simple, y'all. Consistency is very simple. And it is basically a decision that you have to make. It is a decision that you have to make. I know y'all were waiting for me to say something groundbreaking uh, and, you know, mind-blowing. But consistency is a decision that you make. You make up in your mind that you're going to do whatever that thing is that you said you were going to do no matter what comes in your way no matter who tries to stop you no matter what obstacles you face and that's the thing about obstacles y'all that's the thing about obstacles and challenges when you when you make up in your mind to say I'm going to do something I'm going to start a business I'm going to lose weight I'm going to eat better I'm going to work intentionally on improving my marriage or my relationship that's the thing about an obstacle, and you should be thankful for obstacles when they come in your life. Here's why you should be thankful, because God will present obstacles to you to, to see if you really mean what you mean, to see if what you say you're going to do is really worth you fighting for, seeing if it is really worth you fighting for. And so when you have obstacles, even in even in the midst of, of whatever it is you say you're going to do, there's something standing between you and where you're trying to go. Those obstacles are going to be the thing that determines whether or not it's worth fighting for. And if you find yourself in front of an obstacle um, and and, you know, and you don't think it's worth the fight, then it might not be the goal to pursue. But if you find an obstacle in front of you and you're willing to knock that thing down and kick it, kick it in the stomach and, and, and tip it over and do whatever you got to do to step over the top of it, then that is a goal worth fighting for. That is something that uh, consistency, that's what consistency means. So we have to make a decision that we are not going to let any obstacles stand in our way. We are not going to let any person or any negative talk, whether that's negative talk from a person or whether that's our own negative talk. Because people can talk all day, but people talking will not stop the purpose of God from going forth in your life. Now, let me tell you what will stop the purpose of God from going forward in your life. Your mouth will stop the purpose of God from going forward in your life. Your feet, if they don't move, when God says move, they will stop the purpose of God from going. Your heart, if your heart is not right in condition, it will stop the purpose of God from going forward in your life. But people talking and all the stuff that people are saying and doing around you, that won't stop anything. But you will stop it if you are not conditioning yourself conditioning your heart conditioning your mind to move when God says move and that's a faith walk y'all I can teach y'all all the strategies in the world uh, to, to get more consistent but if you don't move by faith and move regardless of what you see or what you don't see and move regardless of who goes with you then you will still not develop the consistency of discipline you need to see that goal go forth and so I don't want to set you guys up for pie in the sky I really don't want to set you guys up for that pie in the sky stuff you know you have people with five steps to do this and five steps to do that and all this kind of stuff consistency is a decision that you have to make in your heart and in your mind that you are not going to let anything stop you and so it's the daily decisions that you make each and every day and that's that's one of the things that the uh the journal that I'm going to the journal that I'm 
that I have, that is uh, the to achieve list, uh, plan your day and conquer your year. That's what I focus on. It's the stuff that you do every day. It does not mean anything to have a purpose and you don't focus on it every day. It does not mean anything when you have when you've discovered your purpose, if you don't do the things that you need to do every single day, those little things day in, day out to achieve that purpose. And focus means nothing if you do not commit to it. And that means committing your energy, committing your time, committing your heart, your mind, your resources, whatever you have to give to that thing every single day. I'm not saying you're going to be 100%. Again, I don't want you to feel like I'm on top of it in 100 every single day. But even if it's just a little something, even if you have to sell in on broken pieces that day, you need to do something because you have to focus on it every day. But you can't just focus uh, one day out of the week. You got to focus every single day. You got to focus every day because it's the little things that you do over time consistently, consistently going back, even though you're worn out, even though you're tired, even though you may be stressed, even though you may be discouraged, you've got to do those things consistently no matter what. And I tell you this, when you consistently go back and you make up in your mind and you recommit to that goal every single day, you got to recommit every day because you can't be focused one day and then you're off for two weeks and then you come back to it. It doesn't work like that. You got to be focused to do it every single day. That's what gets you to the goal. That's how you see people that are successful. They did not get there overnight. People that have huge social media followings or just have achieved great success, they didn't get that overnight. They did it consistently. They did it when nobody was reading their stuff. They did it when nobody was watching their YouTube videos. They still put it out no matter what. No matter if they only had one view on their, on their little YouTube channel. Whatever they had to do, they continuously got consistent and God bless their consistency. God bless their consistency. They're not the it's not because they're the most talented. It's not because they're not the most they're the most beautiful people. They God bless their consistency. God bless their faithfulness. Faithfulness always precedes fruitfulness. When God sees that he can trust you with something small, when God sees that he can trust you to keep on going back and doing the work each and every single day, even if your heart is broken, even if you're discouraged, even if you don't have the energy, even if you're sick to your stomach, God sees he can trust you with something small. That's the type of person that God blesses with something big because he knows that you're not going to flake out on him at the next level. He knows that you're not going to flake out on him at the next level. That's what I said the other night. Some of us are trying to go to the nations, but we can't even uh, reach out and witness to somebody, to the lady that lives next door to us in our apartment complex. But you want to go to the nations? You really want to go to the nations? God can't even trust you to do what you're supposed to do right here in America, right here in Oak Cliff, right here in, in, in wherever you are. How are you going to go to the nations? How are you going to get more? God has to trust you on this level. You have to be faithful over little before God will trust you with much. And that's how you are blessed. It's not because you're the most talented. It's not because you're the most gifted. It's not because you can sing the best or you can write the best. But are you faithful with what God is giving you? Have you made a decision to do whatever you need to do regardless of what's happening? That's consistency. That's what real consistency is. It's not this this stuff that people are talking about now and do this and do that and all this kind of stuff. No, it's about being faithful even when you don't see it. It's about being faithful to God and what he says to do even when it makes absolutely no sense at all. That's what consistency is. I want to encourage you, if you have a business, if you have some, a movement or just whatever you're trying to do to grow it, to reach people, and that's the thing, make sure, and that's what we talked about in the Emerge Devotional, make sure your motive for what you are trying to do is right. And God will also bless that or not bless it. If your motive and why you want your YouTube channel and all this kind of stuff to be huge, why? More people for why? A bigger platform for why? What for what? So you have to make sure you have the right motive. God does not bless us for us. God blesses us with more so that we can be a blessing to other people and achieve 
ultimately his purpose, ultimately his purpose in the earth is what is going to be achieved through us doing what we are called to do. So I want you to embrace starting small. Small and steady, not fast and fragile. Small and steady, not fast and fragile. Because many of us want to go up fast, but anything that goes up too fast is always going to come down. Why? Because the foundation has not been laid. The foundation has not been laid. So small and steady wins the race. Life is not a, a sprint. Life is a marathon. And so we have to understand that it's going to take time. But over that time, will you be consistent? Will you make the decision every single day to do what you need to do? There are some mornings, y'all, when I promise you I'm not feeling it. I am not feeling it. I literally have to talk to myself and, and I've been trying to do better with getting up in the mornings to do my devotionals and, and do my Bible reading, and my prayer before the sun comes up because it's just something about that time of morning that I really feel more connected to God or either later at night. And there are some mornings, y'all, I'm not naturally a morning person. I am not a morning person. Like, please don't mess with me before 10 o'clock. Like, <laughs> I'm not. But I know that there are some things that I absolutely have to do and need to do in order for me to be able to get the results that I want to get, especially spiritually. Because if I'm empty spiritually, I can't. It's, it's just about going to be a struggle for me to do anything naturally if I'm empty and depleted spiritually. So I want you guys to know this as far as being consistent. It is going to be a sacrifice. It is going to be a sacrifice. You are going to have to give up your comfort. If you want to achieve something great, you're not going to get there on flower beds of ease. You are not going to get there on flower beds of ease. It is going to be a sacrifice. You're going to have to work and you're going to have to work hard. Away with all these people that are telling you that you can do all this stuff while you sleep and do all this blah, blah, blah. Yes, there are some things that you can do and you can set up again to... To where you can put some things on autopilot and you'll eventually get there. But again, it's going to take you being consistent and doing the work to get to that level. That's a lot of those people that are telling you that don't tell you the background story of all the stuff they had to do and all the pain that they had to endure and the work that comes with getting things to that level to where things are on autopilot. So you've got to sacrifice. You're going to have to give up your comfort. Uh, you have to give up some things you want to do in order to create the time to do the things you have to do in order to get the desired income. I'm going to say that again. You have to give up some things that you want to do in order to create the time that you need to do the things you have to do in order to get the desired income. I'm not saying that you're going to have to do it. It's not go it's going to be like that all the time, but sometimes you're going to have to cut your TV off. Sometimes you're going to have to cut the TV off. Yeah, you're going to have to cut it off. Sometimes you're going to have to miss an outing or miss an event because you need to be focused and working on some other things. And that's why I said to create the time. Y'all, we have more we have more time than we think. It's just about how are you using that time. I guarantee you if you gauged and clock yourself every day with how much time you look at social media or check an email or, you know, whatever, or just letting your mind wander for that matter and playing Pokemon and all this stuff that we consume our time with. Y'all, we have plenty of time. We have plenty of time. We have plenty of time. Again, time is the one level playing field that we all have. So please don't come to me with time. Any other excuse, but I don't have time. I guarantee you if I follow you around, um, if I follow you around all day, I could probably find three or four hours. I was working with a client the other week. We found three hours in her day of wasted time. Time just wasted. No good reason for the wasted. It's just wasted. But I and we do it mindlessly. We do it mindlessly. We don't even realize we're wasting time. So if you find yourself in those positions where you are are saying that you don't have time, I, I guarantee you just for three days, a day or two, just a day, day or three days or whatever, every single thing that you do, I want you to evaluate and ask yourself, why am I doing this? 
How is what I'm doing right now putting me closer to my goal? Ask yourself, am I wasting my time right now? Am I wasting my time right now? Is this social media, you know, scrolling my timeline, is this bringing me closer to God? Or is this bringing me closer to making a profit today for my business? Like, are the activities that I'm doing right now bringing me closer to my desired goal? And if the answer is no, cut it out. Cut it out. And I'm not trying to beat you up today. This is stuff that I do to myself every day. Because, again, those three businesses, they don't run themselves. They don't run themselves. So I have to, and if I don't, I'm an entrepreneur. I've never worked in corporate America. Not one single day, not one day in corporate America. I have no frame of reference for what they're doing in corporate America. So if I don't get out there and kill it every day, I don't eat. So this is stuff that I tell myself every day. So we've got to make sure we are doing the right things and that we are spending our time wisely each and every day. And it's going to be hard because it requires you to think differently. It requires you to act differently. It requires you to behave differently. And so we've got to realize that it's going to be a sacrifice. We're going to have to change who we are. We literally are going to have to change who we are in order to uh, achieve these goals. If you want to get different results, you're going to have to do different things. That's the, I mean, this is not, y'all, this is not stuff y'all haven't heard. I know y'all are waiting for something, you know, that you have never heard before. But it's, it's, this is just, this is just what it is. You're going to have to do different things. If what you're doing from day to day is not getting you the desired results that you want to see at the end of every year, then you need to consider doing something different. Something's wrong. Okay. So you've got to change how you look at things. You've got to change your thought pattern. You've got to change how you behave, but your, um, your you your 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 thoughts your behavior follows your thoughts so you first got to change how you think and how you see the situation so if you change nothing nothing changes so you got to do that but also again you've got to be realistic with your expectations again you will not see change overnight you will not see stuff overnight you will not you might not even see change over the next 30 days to 90 days, but you've got to be consistent um, because there's magic. There is power in consistency. There is power in consistency. And so now I want to kind of go into some practical things as far as how are you keeping up with your schedule? How are you keeping up with? Ask yourself, you would not believe how many of my clients or people that I work with or people that I just talk to, period, uh, that want to go into business or that want to do this or want to do that or whatever, and they don't keep a calendar, like they don't keep a schedule at all. I'm like, so how do you know what you're supposed to do every day? Like, how does that work? Oh, it's in my head. It is. Um, hey, Paul, how are you, brother? Um, so how do you know what you're supposed to do every day? Like, we're humans, so our minds, like, literally, I can say, I can be sitting here at my desk, and I can say, well, I'm, I'm going to go to the kitchen and get a glass of water, and I could be halfway to the kitchen and literally forgot what I was supposed to be going. I'm like, wait a minute, where was I going, or what was I going to the kitchen? To get? Like, seriously, it gets that bad sometimes. So, you don't want to leave your day up to chance. You want to get something, a tool in place, whether that is... Uh, an electronic calendar. I like Google Calendar, but I also use still use a paper planner, like in a spiral, uh, because it really I use my I use Google Calendar for like appointments and meetings and stuff like that to remind me of stuff or to create my task list. Like if I have little tasks, I have to go to the store or something like that, and need to pick up certain things. Um, then I you I love Google Calendar for that because it syncs across all my devices, whatnot. But um, I also use a paper planner. And that is better for me to plan out actual projects, uh, to plan it out so I can actually see it. And it's also actually better when I really have to get stuff done because here's the caveat to an electronic calendar or something that's on your phone. Because your phone is a um, weapon of mass distraction, y'all. 
I'm going to say that again just in case you missed it. Your phone is a weapon of mass distraction. And I promise you, my phone, as you can probably imagine, is constantly dinging, pinging, whatever. If my phone is not beeping, buzzing, vibrating, doing all kind of stuff throughout the day, I need to make sure I pay my bill because something is wrong. My phone is always going off. So that's the only caveat. If your phone is like mine, is if I go into it to look for something on my calendar, then I see a notification or I get an email or I get a text message or whatever, then it's easy to get sidetracked. So that's why I do like to keep the paper planner, especially when I'm planning and working on projects. It helps to keep me focused and it's I'm less likely to get distracted uh, when I have when I have that. So a calendar definitely, absolutely, absolutely. It's going to hold you accountable and it's going to reinforce everything that you have to do. So you definitely need to get something to keep up with your schedule. I don't care if you use a paper planner. And if you use a paper planner, always write in pencil so that you can change things on the fly. Um, don't write in pen because, like I said, things change very quickly and you may want to add something, whatever. So always write in pencil. But remember, if it is not scheduled, it is not real if it is not scheduled it is not real i told one of my clients this uh we had a session yesterday i think yeah yesterday one of my clients um and you know she was needing to set some time a block of time to work on some different things that she had well i was like well she said, well, I'm going to do a Saturday. I said, well, what time Saturday? Well, I don't know. Maybe Saturday afternoon, blah, blah, blah. No, you need to set an actual time. You need to set an actual block of time. And so this is for you all. If you say you're going to do something or if you have a schedule, uh, something that you're going to do and you have an activity you need to get done or some work that you need to get done, always put it on your calendar as though it is an event or a meeting um, so that if people request your time during that block of time, you have it set to say from one to three, I'm going to work on my uh, my book. I'm going to write. I'm going to sit down and write from one to three. So if somebody calls you and wants you to go out with them on Saturday from one to three, well, you can look at your calendar and say, well, I'm not available from one to three. Yeah, so I have to, you know, I have to pass. I have to take a rain check. They don't have to know why you're not available from one to three, but you have to make a commitment to be consistent, to keep that appointment that you have to work on your goals and to do the things that you need to do to move your goals forward. Remember when I said sometimes you're going to have to forego activities and opportunities to be able to have the time that you need to work on those things, y'all. I promise you, your world is not going to end if you don't go, you know, to the to the get together or to the movies or to this or to that. I'm telling you, all these people, I've never seen a generation, seriously, all these people just kicking it and partying. I'm like, why are you partying broke and with no purpose, no fulfillment because you partying, you hanging out and you having fun. Yeah, but you are not going anywhere. So I promise you, y'all, if y'all miss a few events, it's not the end of the world. I promise you every moment that you spend walking in your destiny is going to make up for every event that you had to miss to work on whatever you needed to work on. It's going to make up for every uh, movie you had to miss or whatever that you had to miss. It's going to make up for that. So stay focused. So keep those things in your calendar like they are actual events. I always say schedule your dream like a part-time job. Schedule your dream like a part-time job. And I guarantee you, when you see those things on your calendar and you start keeping your commitment for that time in your day, uh, it is going to it is going to improve your consistency with actually doing what you say you're going to do. It's not 100 percent. Nothing is 100 percent. Life happens. Things do come up. But I'm telling you, you shorten the uh, you lessen the chance for something to come up for it to, or for it to not get done. If you write that thing down and you schedule the time that you need to work on it. So whatever method works best for you, figure that out. Figure it out tonight. Don't let any water get under the bridge. Figure out if you're going to use a paper calendar, whatever. Use Google Calendar. I don't know any of the others that are electronic. I just I just know Google Calendar. So, yeah, try that. Um, but, yeah, figure something out that works. And set alarms for stuff. Like, if you... You know, set alarms. 
like set alarms, write everything down. There are some times when uh, I am working on something and keep always keep something to write with. Like when you, um, when you, you know, when you're sitting down to work on something, always keep something to write with or something to write on. That's one of the things that I talk about, uh, especially when it comes to journaling. Keep something to write with because, again, you're going to, I guarantee you, if you forgot what you were supposed to be doing, when you really sit down to work on what you need to be working on, you're going to, all that stuff is going to start coming back to your mind. Oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. Well, no, just write, especially when it comes to praying and studying and reading your Bible. You're going to start remembering all kinds of stuff. The enemy's going to start bringing everything you were supposed to be doing back to your remembrance when it's time to get in your word. So keep something to write with so you can jot those ideas down and revisit them after you have kept your commitment to do whatever that thing is that you said you were going to do. So again, set alarms. Um, set alarm wrote through you. Oh, God confirmed. Wow, I wish I could show. Oh, Jay, you're going to have to email me. Send me an email or something with the picture. I'd love to to um, to to see and hear what, what you're talking about. So send me an email, coaching at rachellproctor.com. Coaching, C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G at rachellproctor.com. Send it to me. All right, so yeah, you've got to find something and to make sure you stay consistent. Always write down everything. Set alarms for stuff until it becomes a habit. Set alarms if you need to, however you need to remind yourself to do something, uh, do it. Do it. Set an alarm. Remind yourself whatever it is you need to do until it becomes a habit. Um, again, be realistic when you're filling up your calendar, when you're making out your calendar, when you're planning for the day. I say three three major things is you know in one day is good uh, because life does happen, you know, and you just need some margin in your day for things to happen. Or if you just need to sit and just let your mind settle, do some mindless activities to kind of recharge your brain throughout the day. Don't fill your schedule up, you know, from the time you wake up till your head hits the pillow at night, you got something scheduled. No, that's not the type, that's not being productive. That's just being unrealistic. And you're going to always be disappointed and feel like a failure because you're not hitting these million things you know, that you have scheduled in the day um, because that's what disappointment is. It's when our reality does not meet our expectations. So you don't want to put more on you. You don't want to set unrealistic expectations. Just be prayerful about what you can reasonably do in a day when you're planning out each day for these things. Um, again, and that's going to help you be consistent. When you are successfully hitting those targets each and every day, That again, that's going to build your momentum. That's going to build up your confidence to know that you can do it. Uh, my email is coaching, C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G, coaching at rachellproctor.com and rachel is r-a-c-h-e-l then my middle initial l again proctor p-r-o-c-t-o-r.com so coaching at rachellproctor.com so yes absolutely set realistic expectations because no matter how much you plan things everything is not going to always go as planned and you have to anticipate that too. Anticipate what challenges you might have. That's why I always tell my coaching clients, whenever you have things planned or whenever you set a plan or you have a strategy, then always anticipate challenges that you may in encounter so that you can be prepared for those challenges and think of ways that you're going to get over those challenges if they are to present themselves so that you can keep moving so that they don't have to be a point of a stopping point to stop you from doing uh, what you need to be doing. OK, so again, um, yeah, you've got to you've got to schedule it and you've got to be realistic, but also make sure you are putting things on your calendar that, again, are things of purpose, things that God has told you are for you to do in this particular season of your life. Um, that's that's again, that's just basically priorities. Um, what you know, what priorities doing things each and every day that are going to move you closer to your goal. Um, and sometimes you got to start all the way back, you know, at ground zero. And, and that can be disheartening for some people because they want to be, you know, up here. But you've got to start at back to basics. You've got to set those priorities, but sometimes you got to move it all the way back to the starting line. Um, and sometimes that's, again, that's disheartening because we want to move fast. But I'm telling y'all, 
slow and steady will win the race because it's going to set the foundation. It's going to build your character. It's going to build your stamina. It's going to build your patience and your endurance. But we've got to have the right priorities. Ask yourself, whenever you're planning out your day, are these things that I have prioritized moving me to my goal? Y'all, this is not, I don't know. I feel like this is so, I don't know. Is it just me? Like what? Ask yourself, is these things that's on my list, are they actually moving me to my goal? You know, because sometimes we wear busyness just because we're busy. We wear that like a badge of honor. Well, ants are busy. I mean, they moving and doing whatever they do. So busyness does not equate to productivity. So make sure the things that you are busy doing every day are moving you to your goal. Pick a time system. Pick a scheduling system that works best for you. But again, consistency comes when you find that momentum and and when you start achieving and being successful every day and you get that momentum and you start building that confidence. But again, you're going to have to be realistic with what you can do in a day. And when you start, start small, then you're going to start building up, you know, to be able to do more in a day and to be able to knock things out. And you're going to start learning how to be more efficient and how more effective with your time. Um, but you just got to keep moving. You got to keep adjusting. Balance is not this thing where we say, okay, we give equal time to everything in our life. No, balance is very dynamic. You know, where, where you, you know, the things that you gave more time to last week, you may not be able to give that much time to it this week. Balance, you got to, you got to look at it every day. I, I set a meeting with myself on Sundays to plan out my week, but I also plan day by day by day. Um, so, you know, I, I set those things out to see, okay, what didn't work this week or what do I really need to focus on this week? It's not going to be the same thing that I focused on last week. Chances are, maybe, I don't know, but all the time it's not. So you can't try to be stuck in this little box to say balances. I got to give equal time to everything. Well, no, some days you're going to be, you're going to have to give more time to one thing, your relationship. Just the other day, you may have to give more time to your business. Whatever it is, but balance is very dynamic. So, yeah, that kind of wraps it up. That kind of wraps it up for tonight uh, with consistency. But, yeah, you got to consistency, y'all. It is a decision. It is a decision that you make that you are not going to let anything, any obstacle stand in your way from where you are to where you want to be. You're going to step over the top of it each and every time. Step over the top of it each and every time. First time. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys follow and make sure you share. And thank you guys for the hearts, too. But um, I'll take just a few more questions. Y'all, we've been on here almost 45 minutes, <laughs> almost 45 minutes. So I know many of you guys have to go, but I will take a few questions. Um, please um, make sure they are on topic. <laughs> make sure they are on topic and preferably questions that can benefit the entire group here on Periscope. Um, but, you know, we'll see. If you have any questions, you are very welcome. How do you know when you're walking into your purpose? How do you know when you're walking into your purpose? Um, I think that is a that is a decision that, or that is a something that you realize when you have prayed. I know that sounds very cliche, but again, I think a lot of times our purpose, it depends on kind of what your idea of purpose is. And because I don't know that, I'm going to answer it the best way that I think I know how. Um, I believe our purpose is something that is very intrinsic to us. I think a lot of times purpose in what we are currently doing is something that will be natural for you, something that will come easy for you. Um, and I think a lot of times we're looking for our purpose we have to start at what we're good at um, because God has gifted us again with everything we need to be able to uh, live out our purpose and to do whatever it is he wants us to do. And I think when you are walking in your purpose, it will bring you peace. Uh, you will have peace around that thing and it will be enjoyable. You will feel fulfilled at the end of every day when you're walking in your purpose. Um, I think sometimes we do things thinking that it's something someone else wants us to do or we feel like this is how we're going to make more money. But I believe when you truly follow your heart with those things that make you happy, the money, the the you know, the the influence, all those other things will follow. 
But again, I think it's definitely something that you should be prayerful about and ask God to show you what are you supposed to be doing in this season. Again, I don't know enough about your situation to necessarily speak directly to you about it. Um, oh, but God opened the door again in the day spot I used to work at. Now I have full-time peace. Wow. Great, 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 great. That's awesome. God is so awesome. So, yeah, I think it's about asking God, what are you supposed to be doing in this season right now? But I think definitely finding your purpose in regards to what you are tangibly supposed to be uh, on time. Yay. That is so amazing, Marie. That is so amazing. Um, it's definitely going to come with what you're good at naturally. Um, again, that's going to come with having the confidence to walk in that. Because a lot of times for me, I know for me personally, one of my testimonies is that even when I was very little, well, I'm still a good, I still feel like I'm a good writer. I've, I've been told I'm a very good writer. I was a good writer even as a small child, but because it wasn't the uh, sexy gifts that the other kids had, so to speak, or, you know, stuff that people could really see. I was always apprehensive about really sharing it or I never really did anything with it because it didn't look like what a gift was supposed to look like. So I never really looked at writing as being a part of my purpose. Although as I got older and I matured spiritually, I saw that it was very much so a huge part of my purpose. Um, so don't be afraid if your gift doesn't look like what everybody else's does. Um, you know, I think you have to really be confident in knowing that God makes no mistakes. And again, like I said, that God has put everything in you uh, that you need to actually achieve the purpose. So look at look at what those things are naturally. What are you naturally gifted at? And a lot of things that we do, they are very natural for us and they're very, you know, we're very good at it. So we don't look at it as anything important because we feel, oh, well, this is just something I just do. You know, it just comes natural for me. Well, believe it or not, things that are easy for you may be rocket science for somebody else. Um, yes, they may be rocket science for somebody else. Please pray that I will stay focused and not jump. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so they may be rocket science for somebody else. So always celebrate and appreciate um, uh, appreciate what you're good at. And that is going to be a huge part of your purpose. But I think to know that you're walking in your purpose, you will have peace around it. And God will confirm that in different ways, uh, whether that is providing opportunities for you to utilize that gift or having even people to come and talk to you or tell you or just to affirm in some way uh, that you that that is what you're supposed to be doing. Should you force yourself to work when you don't feel God pouring into you regarding your purpose i'm kind of can you rephrase that question again i'm kind of confused about uh not really clear on what your question is <coughs> thank y'all so much for the hearts you know how when you're at church and and uh, the the sound equipment start acting up and it's like silence and dead silence. They be like, everybody just get a Lord of praise. <laughs> That's how y'all doing with these hearts, trying to fill up this this uh, this this empty space. <laughs> anyway, I've I'm, I've been over churched. I've been <laughs> been in church all my life. So um, anyway um. Yeah, so I think that um, purpose, a big part of purpose and knowing your purpose is going to uh, be doing the things that come natural for you. But a big part of pursuing purpose, there are going to be some very lonely seasons. And that kind of goes back to that last question that the person uh, just posed that I was kind of unclear on. Um, there are going to be some seasons where you don't see anything. I mean, not a nothing. When should when you know your purpose, should you force yourself to work at all times? Absolutely. I think if I understand your question correctly, that's what we're talking about tonight is consistency, being consistent to that purpose and um, putting the energy and the time into it to watch it grow and being a, a good steward over it. Because our gifts, our children, everything that we have now is on loan to us. So what are you doing? Like the people that had the talents, you know, are you going to go back out and do something with it? 
You know what I'm saying? But a lot of a lot of our that process, you're not going to see anything. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be years. There there are some things that I started years ago and I'm just now seeing the fruit of that thing this year, like yesterday. I've been working on it for years. Like even with my property management company, that was years in the making before I got that. I didn't see anything. There were a lot of seasons of discouragement. There were a lot of seasons of loneliness. There were a lot of seasons when God had to remove people out of my life. There were a lot of seasons when God had to give me the things I was contending with him for just for me to throw it back and be like, okay. And for him to say, told you so. Like there were, there have been so many times uh, when I saw nothing, but I had to continue to work on that, especially when I knew that it was the right thing to be doing, especially when I was 100% sure that God, I know you called me to this. I don't understand. I have no clue why I'm here. I have no clue why I'm in the pit, Joseph. Like I have absolutely no idea when God has shown you the dream, he's shown you that you will be great. He's shown you that things, the things that you will do and you find yourself in a pit betrayed by the people that are closest to you, uh, find yourself then from moving to one place and you kind of find your way out of it. And you're, you're, you know, you've been ex exalted just to find yourself back now being put in jail. I mean, look at, read the story of Joseph. I'm telling you, it'll, it'll bless your life. Um, Joseph as in the book of what Genesis, I believe it is. Is it Genesis? Joseph? Genesis? Let me find it. Where you need to read. But you need to read um And you need to read that because there are gonna be many seasons God will show you, especially if what you said you are sure that you are walking in your purpose and you know, yeah, they, um, yeah, book of Genesis. This is, uh, Genesis 37. Let me see. I don't know where it starts. Genesis 37. Um, but yeah, you need to read that, um, and look at his life and then look at what God did through his life. Um, and so, yeah, you absolutely need to keep working, you know, on it, even though, um, Oh, great. Great. Well, absolutely. Y'all watch the replay. But if you guys are not on my email list, you know what? I don't have my email list link up anymore. But um, if you guys are not on my email list, let me see how you can go. You can go. Well, nah, sir. but anyway, I'll have it. I'll have the replay up for the YouTube video. And also for the Periscope, of course, Periscope saves it. So you can go back and watch the, the replay. Uh, here in Periscope with all the so you can watch it from the beginning and get all the information uh, but yeah that is what I have to say about that oh great 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 yeah so if oh that's what you should do that is what you should do thank you Jay God is using you tonight God is using you tonight y'all need to download the Emerge Online app the Emerge Online devotional app in the Google Play Store if you have an Android, if you're still stuck in the Stone Ages and you have not evolved to an iPhone, I'm kidding, y'all. I used to have, I just got rid of my note like a couple months ago. But um, yeah, if you don't have an iPhone, then get it in the Google Play Store and it's also in the App Store. For iPhones, it is the Emerge Online devotional app. Each and every day, I send out either a devotional, a very short devotional, doesn't take you all day to read it, uh, but it will be short and impactful. Joseph, yes, uh huh, absolutely. So, it will encourage you. And then on the every other day, I send also a timeline graphic with an inspirational message that you can share on social media. Also within the app, I also send out, uh, you know, replays. There are videos you can watch in there in the media section. There's a Bible. There's a journal. Um, ways to shop in my store and just all that stuff is in the app. So it's a one stop shop. Download it tonight if you have not downloaded it. As soon as we get off Periscope, I want everybody that does not have the app to get over there into your respective stores, whether that's the App Store or the Google Play Store, and download it tonight. It is absolutely free, so you have nothing to lose. So, and I think you guys would absolutely love it. So, I will have the video replay in there as well. So, 
Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, yeah. And another thing. Uh, the My To Achieve list, Plan Your Day and Conquer Your Year, Jumbo Journal will be out tonight for pre-order. Pre-order, y'all. Look at your neighbor and say pre-order. The, the journals will ship mid-September. We are only doing pre-orders for this journal. Once we max out on our pre-order, we will not make it available again until late fall y'all we're trying to do a test run with this i think you guys are going to absolutely love it but we are not doing any more orders for it once we max out this time and i think we're going to max out pretty fast so i'm opening the cart tonight at midnight that means in the next hour and a half that's central standard time i'm central standard time y'all i don't know east coast people it might already be midnight somewhere it's midnight somewhere but tonight, midnight Central Standard Time, we will make the cart open. Um, I will send out an email to my email list and I will send out a notification through the app because I want you guys that are connected with me in the Emerge Online community to be the first people to have a chance to place an order for this journal. This is something, again, that's, well, everything I put out is dear to my heart, but I really love the concept of this journal. It is actually a journal journal with uh that's gonna this is not it i don't have the proof in here but this is one of my journals um it is going to <laughs> i might actually put the link up after i get off periscope shawnee so i don't know um so yeah it's gonna have pages where you can write your thoughts ideas your plans but i'm gonna also have in the very front of the journal some of my favorite tips to create the action guide that will help you to be able to, number one, determine what season of life you are in. Because as I said earlier, knowing what season you are in is going to either propel your effectiveness or it's going to hinder your effectiveness if you're in the wrong season, if you're trying to operate in the wrong season. So, um, and also just a lot of the practical planning things. Uh, and just again talking about commitment so all of that stuff is in there I really want and the cover is really cute too y'all the cover is so cute did y'all see it on the thing it is so cute like the I'm sound like a Kardashian <laughs> so cute but um yeah I want y'all to have it I want you guys to order it so we will have them on pre-order and once we max out that will be it but I will be sending out a message and an email uh, shortly for you guys to, to go and do that. And then uh, once I do that, send it out to you guys. I'm going to post it on social media for everybody else to uh, be able to get their hands on one in the pre-order time. And then again, it will ship in mid-September, possibly earlier than that, um, depending on you know production time and how fast they can ship them to me for me to ship them to y'all. All right. Well, if there are no more questions, then uh, I'm going to pray us out on tonight. Y'all can tell it's getting late because now I'm starting to act up. Let me see, y'all. I'm trying to make sure because I'm videotaping this for YouTube too so I can post it uh, in the app too. But if not, um, if you guys submit a prayer request, if you want to submit a prayer request, drop it in the chat box. Or if you have the Emerge Online uh, app, devotional app, you can actually submit prayer requests directly to me. I do respond to them. Uh, I don't always respond to them right away because I get a lot of them. So I hope you guys can understand why I don't respond back right away. But I do respond to each and every one of them. Uh, because that is something that I I promised God that I would do. It is 20 bucks. It is 20 bucks. And so it will be more in late fall uh, when we when we uh, release it again in the late fall. So it is 20 bucks plus shipping. Um, so, yes, if you don't have any prayer requests or if you just don't want to write them in the chat box or if you want to submit them through the app, please do that. It comes to me as an email. Uh, I'm going to pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time together, God. We thank you for helping us to realize where we need to improve, God. 
We thank you because we are not ashamed that we need to improve, God. We thank you because we know that when we realize where we need to get better at, that we can do the things we need to do in order to get better. We thank you for that. God, we thank you that we live in a country that we can be free to glorify your name, to bless your name, to speak about you in public, to read your word without fear that somebody will, uh, you know, that we will be... uh, attacked or just anything bad will happen to us, God, but we thank you for it, for that opportunity, God. We thank you that we are free. God, now I thank you and I pray over every, each and every dream that each and every person that is represented on this broadcast has tonight, God. Whatever that thing is that you have purposed in their heart, God. God, help them to become more consistent. Help them to see the benefit. Help them to see how achieving these goals matters to them. It matters to their future. It matters to their purpose. It matters to their loved ones, their children, their spouse, their relationship. Whatever it is, it matters. They've got to do this. So God, help them to develop the consistency and the determination to keep pressing towards the mark through discouragement. Even when there are tears, there are tears uh, running down their face, God, help them to persevere no matter what. Help them to step over the top of any obstacle that tries to get in their way, anything the enemy tries to throw at them, God. We know that you are our shield, that you have protected us, God, that you are here for us, God. And God, we know that we can walk in faith even when we don't understand it, even when we don't see it, even when we don't get it. God, we thank you because you are working this thing out. We thank you because we don't have to stress. We don't have to be anxious because you're working this thing out, God. Help us to persevere. Help us to see everything through to the end. God, we know there are going to be some lonely seasons. We know there are going to be some trying seasons that are going to come that you are going to send just to see if we really mean what we say, God. And God, we thank you so much for for doing it. We thank you so much for doing it, God. We know that the perseverance is only going to build us up. We know that when we make it through one test and one test, God, that we are going to go from faith to faith to faith to faith, God, and we are going to be giants in you, God. God, we thank you for increasing our hunger for your word, God. God, we know that our our ear to hear from you is only built up when we commit to read your written word. Your known will, God. Help us to hunger after you. Help us to thirst after you like never before, God. Help us to be spiritual giants, God. We don't want to be malnourished, but we want to be spiritual giants in you, God. God, we want everything to spill out of us and that others around us, others that are connected to us, will be able to enjoy the overflow of you that comes from our life when we are walking in our purpose. We and we are consistent to our call, God. People are relying on us. People are relying on us to do what you have called us to do, God. And God, we thank you for giving us the courage. We thank you for taking away all anxiety. God, we are not worried about what other people are going to think about us. We are not worried about how they're going to feel about us. God, but we are only focused on you and what you want us to do, God, because we know that we give an account to you, God. And before anybody ever had an opinion about us, God, you already had a plan for us, God, and it is a good plan. And God, we intend to get everything that you have for us this year. We intend to get everything. Everything that you have for us this year. The enemy has fought us year after year after year after year to keep us from walking in our purpose because he knows when we walk in our authority that he loses his. He knows when we walk in our authority that he loses his. His and God, we thank you for power. We thank you for strength like never before. We thank you for clarity of vision, clarity of purpose, clarity regarding our assignment, God, clarity regarding whatever it is that we are supposed to do, God. And we thank you and we praise you, believing it done through faith in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys.